The next part of thermochemistry concerns equilibrium. Let's consider this reaction, which I'm sure you're tired of looking at, in which the energy of activation forward is less than the energy of activation reverse. This means that the forward rate constant is greater than the reverse rate constant. If we start with all reactants, the initial rate forward will be greater than the initial reverse rate. But let's think about the reaction as it continues. If we start with reactants, it's true that the initial forward rate will be greater than the initial reverse rate. But what happens as the reactants go down in concentration and the products build up? The forward rate of the reaction will slow and the reverse rate of the reaction will speed up until the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate at a point known as equilibrium. Equilibrium is defined as when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction or the free energy change is equal to zero. Let's write out our rate expressions. The rate for the forward reaction is equal to the forward rate constant multiplied by the hydroxide times the methyl iodide concentration, as these are reactants. The reverse rate is equal to the reverse rate constant multiplied by the iodide concentration and the methanol concentration, as these are our products. At equilibrium, the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate. So let me set the expressions equal to one another. Now I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging. This ratio, the forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant, is equal to the equilibrium constant. We represent the equilibrium constant with a capital K. Rate constants use lowercase k. That is one way to represent the equilibrium constant. Another way is to look at the concentrations we have here. These are the product concentrations raised to their coefficient divided by the reactant concentrations raised to their coefficients. So equilibrium constant is products divided by reactants. Here's a little exercise to help you understand equilibrium. We're going to start with 24 reactant tokens and no product tokens. Our forward rate constant will be one third of the tokens going forward, or 0.33 tokens per minute. Our reverse rate constant will be one fifth of the tokens going in reverse, or 0.2 tokens per minute. I already know that this reaction coordinate diagram is one in which delta G naught is negative and goes downhill from reactants to products. I'll explain that to you once we finish the exercise. For this exercise, we're only going to work with whole numbers and we'll discard fractions and do not round up. This is so we can work with a manageable number like 24 tokens instead of Avogadro's number of tokens. We'll start with 24 reactant and no product tokens, and we're going to do five exchanges. Here we are at the start, 24 reactant and no product tokens. Our first exchange will be one third times 24. That would be eight. For our reverse rate, this will be one fifth times zero. So that would be zero. Let's make our first exchange. We are now at 16 and eight. Time for the second exchange, one third of 16. That will be five. One fifth of eight, rounding down, will be one. Time for exchange number two. Now we are at 12 tokens on the reactant side and 12 tokens on the product side. Many times students think this is equilibrium because we have an equal amount of tokens on each side, but that's not our definition. 
our definition is that the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate. Our forward rate is five tokens. Our reverse rate is one token. So we're not at equilibrium yet. Let's try another exchange. One third times 12. That would be four tokens. One fifth times 12. That would be two tokens. So let's do our exchange. Now we are at 10 and 14. One third of 10 tokens. That will be three. One fifth of 14. We are rounding down, so that will be two. It's time to put three forward and two in reverse. Now we are at nine and 15. One third of nine. That would be three. One fifth of 15 also three. So let's put three tokens forward and three tokens reverse. We are still at nine to 15 and will be for the rest of the day. Our forward rate is three and our reverse rate is three. That is what equilibrium is, the forward and reverse rates being equal. It doesn't mean we stop the exchange at equilibrium, it means that the exchange rate is equal so that the concentrations do not change. If we looked at what happened here, the rate forward started out high and slowed down. The reverse rate started low and sped up until they were equal. So this is Mother Nature's lowest energy state. She settled in with nine tokens on reactant side and 15 tokens on product side. What would happen if we started on the other side with 24 product tokens and no reactant tokens? We'll have the same rate constants. Let's look at that scenario. We have 24 tokens on the product side and none on the reactant side. Our forward rate will be zero tokens. Our reverse rate will be one fifth of 24 or four tokens. So let's make our first exchange. Now we will take one third of four, which is one, and move it forward, and one fifth of 20, which is four, and move it in reverse. We are now at seven and 17. One third of seven would be two, one fifth of 17 would be three. So let's do our next exchange, two forward and three in reverse. We are now at eight and 16. One third of eight, rounding down is two, one fifth of 16 is three. So we will put two tokens forward and three in reverse. Now we are at 9 and 15. One third of 9 would be 3, and one fifth of 15 would also be 3. So let's do our exchange of 3 forward and 3 reverse. Once again, we are at equilibrium. We can continue exchanging forward and reverse all day long, and the ratio will still be 9 to 15. Let's look at what happened for this scenario. Our reverse rate started out high and slowed down. Our forward rate started out low and sped up until we reached equilibrium of nine to 15. So what is the value of KEQ for this reaction? Well, it could be defined as products divided by reactants. So that would be 15 divided by 9, or 1.67. Another definition is the forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant. So that would be 0.33 divided by 0.2, which is again 1.67. One way to think about equilibrium in the reaction coordinate diagrams is like a balance. If the reaction coordinate diagram is such that delta G naught is negative, so product is on a lower side than reactant, then we will have more product than reactant. That's the only way the scale makes sense. 
So at equilibrium, for scenarios where delta G naught is negative, products are in excess of reactants, and the equilibrium constant will therefore be greater than one for scenarios in which delta G naught is less than zero. So think about how this diagram incorporates both enthalpy and entropy. In enthalpy terms, the lower energy side is definitely preferred. But if we put all 15 tokens here, there's no entropy to the system. So a portion of the tokens are placed at the higher energy to have some variability and spread out the energy among multiple states. This is Mother Nature's balance between low energy and dispersed energy. Now is a good time to explain how delta G and delta G naught are related. Here we have what's known as a reaction composition diagram for R, which is reactant, in equilibrium with product. On the left, we have 100% reactant. On the right, we have 100% product. This is a diagram in which delta G naught is negative because we are at lower energy on the product than the reactant side. So imagine a loose string between the reactant platform and the product platform. If these two were at the same level, the string would sag in the middle. But because the product is at lower energy, the string sags more to the right side. Where does it sag? At equilibrium, where we are at nine reactant tokens and 15 product tokens, which by the way is 62.5% of the way to product. So consider the reaction as we're running. We're gonna start at reactant, and the free energy change for the reaction as it's occurring will be the slope, which is rise over run. As we get started, the slope is negative. A negative delta G means, of course, go forward. So in the blue region, the reaction will continue forward spontaneously. But what happens when we get to equilibrium? First off, what is the slope right here of this line? It's zero. This is when the free energy change is equal to zero. If we go beyond equilibrium concentrations, what is the slope of this line going to do? It's going to be positive. Once we get past equilibrium, delta G is positive, meaning it will not spontaneously go forward. However, if we start like the second scenario where we had 24 product tokens, then the reaction will go backward spontaneously until we reach equilibrium. So I hope that explains why a reaction in which delta G naught is negative will have conditions where delta G is also negative, but there can be conditions where delta G is positive, depending on the difference in height between reactant and product energies.